Hey guys, it's Hunter from Huntertainment, and I just wanted to take a second and talk to you about McDonald's and what it's like working there and give you some tips and tricks on how to make your experience just a little bit better uh, according to the employees at McDonald's and I and you can trust me because I just happen to be one of those employees. The first thing I want to say is your attitude. Customer attitude when you go in there is like basically everything. If you have a good attitude in your plate, you're going to have a good experience. If you have a bad attitude and aren't really polite about things and you're just rude about everything and you start yelling and throwing things, you're not going to have a good time, obviously. Anyway, I just wanted to share some stories about my experience with customer patience and just attitude in general. Uh, story number one, I've had fries thrown at me because they were cold. I wasn't even the one making fries, I was just assembling orders and serving them off. And another time, this one guy came through the front counter and like, you know, he ordered, paid for his food, everything went fine, he was in a good mood, or whatever. He wasn't really ever in a bad mood, but, um, he had, he had the balls to, as soon as he was done paying for his food and he stepped aside to, for, to let the other person, you know, order and pay for their food, he turned to me and said, so where's my food? What? Okay, um, first of all, you have zero patience whatsoever. It takes a little bit more than two seconds to make, like, three sandwiches and a box of fries. Thank you very much. Second of all, there was, like, there were, like, seriously seven or eight people behind him waiting for their food. Because it was, like, around two, which is, like, around when we get, like, a post-lunch kind of rush sort of deal. And this guy just came in expecting instant food instead of fast food. Instant means... Happening or coming immediately. Urgent. Pressing. A precise moment of time. A very short space of time. A moment. Fast. Meaning... Moving or capable of moving at high speed. That one doesn't matter because it's about a clock. At high speed. That one also does not matter because it's about moving. Not the same. It takes like five minutes, maybe, to get your food to you. And there's like a lot that goes into making all your food and making, and making sure that it gets out on time. Anyway, story number three. We have two drive through lanes. The speaker in lane one was broken and I was taking orders, so I was basically screaming at this lady just so she could hear me and she took it as I was mad. Even though I said, I'm not mad, I have to yell because the speaker is broken, I apologize. And she still took it as I am angry at her and she just blew up, started cussing me out and everything else and it was just not a good time. She was very rude, she still ordered and paid for her food, but I had to step out of there and just take a breath because if I had not done that, I would have died. Story number four is uh, this one lady came through the drive-thru, I was on cash, meaning I'm the person that you see at the window who takes your money and gives you a receipt and sends you off to the next window to get your food. Um, that lady tried to give, uh, her order was like five dollars and some odd cents. So she gave me the some odd cents, along with the 20, which by the way, it is really annoying when you pay with a 20 for a small order. It just is. Don't, just pay up to the next dollar or ten dollars. Don't pay extravagantly much. Like I had a dude pay for a 75 cent order, just a senior coffee, with a hundred dollar bill. That's just dumb. Don't do that. Anyway, uh, off the tangent, back to the story. This lady gave me the some odd cents in... It was like two quarters, some pennies, and a dime. But the problem was they were Canadian quarters, and I can't, we don't accept Canadian quarters. So I told, so I politely told her, I'm sorry, I cannot accept Canadian quarters. Do you have any other quarters and or just forms of change? And she said, um, excuse me? What do you mean you can't accept Canadian quarters? And I just said, we can't accept Canadian quarters. I'm sorry, we only accept American currency. This is America. And then her boyfriend, the one driving, was like, the exchange rate's the same, dude. You can't, what do you mean you can't accept those? It's a quarter in either country. And I said, I'm, I'm sorry, I just, I can't accept these. And then the lady was like, I want to see your manager. Like, really forcefully, just, I want to see your manager. Like, right now. So I said, fine, give them their money back. And went to go and ma get my manager. She came out and told them literally the exact same thing. We can't accept these. We only accept American currency. I'm sorry. So the lady started cussing her out, and I made note to look up the exchange rate later, which I did. The exchange rate from American currency to Canadian currency is 0.77. One Canadian dollar is 77 cents in America. And I also looked up what a quarter is, 
25 cents in Canada is only 19 cents in America. So they were wrong on two parts. The exchange rate is not one to one and we can accept Canadian money. I don't know if other businesses can. I've never come across a business that can accept Canadian money. Have you? Not on the border, I guess? I don't know. Which brings me to my second point, managers. We need them for a lot of stuff. Like whenever we're typing something in and a customer changes their mind too many times or we make too many mistakes typing it in because those registers freeze up a lot. Like they still run on Windows XP for crying out loud, they freeze up. Um, if Anyway, if there's enough mistakes made and we need to clear those out and redo them, we need a manager to type in numbers so we can continue like crossing things off. And a lot of times I'll be like, I'm sorry I hit the wrong button or my, I'm sorry my register's freezing up, can you give me a second? Or whatever. I like the majority of the managers. There's only three that I don't like all that much. One of them owns two stores and is the general manager of that store and the one across town. Whenever he's in the store, like, observing or whatever, you need to be absolutely perfect and do your job to the standards of the training videos that you watched, like, the first day that you start. Otherwise, you are going to get into major trouble. And I'm not gonna name names, but let's just call him Bob. Bob comes in, and everybody is, like, immediately, it's like cockroaches, like, scatter. Like, nobody wants to be around this guy. Anyway, don't like him because you have to be absolutely perfect. The other three managers, let's just name them Lisa, Jerry, and Max. Lisa, she has the most annoying voice ever known to mankind. And, um, you also kind of have to be, like, perfect when she's around, but not, like, as perfect as Bob when Bob's around. Um, it's, uh... She's very nitpicky about things, and she's extremely competitive. Like, whenever she's the grill manager, she always, like, obsesses over the times, like, how long it takes to make each sandwich. Jerry, he's really, really fake, and whenever he's, like, on the front counter, he makes things that nobody needs. Nobody, like, he just makes extra food just to make extra food. The third manager, um, actually, let's just call her Maxime. A, she doesn't talk, like, at all, and whenever she does, it's never a nice thing. She never, like, congratulates you, like, oh, you made your times, congratulations. Like, you're doing a really good job at your station or whatever. It's always, like, you can go a little bit faster. Hey, you're not doing it fast enough. Why aren't you doing it fast enough? I could easily do it. See, watch. And then she'll, like, take over your station and then yell at you because you're not doing anything. What? How am I supposed to do things if you took over my station? That's not how this works. Like, that's not, I can't do anything if you're doing my job for me. Times? We have certain time limits in which we need to get the food out to the people, make the food, or assemble the food, or whatever. But like for front counter, when you start ordering, uh, whatever the cashier types in immediately goes to another screen, and then the person who's running will look at that screen and see what you're ordering, and then pick out that exact food from the warmer drawers that are like right beside them, and each order has a certain number assigned to it. And our system is, you order, you get your receipt, your number is at the top of your receipt, you stand in the lobby, and you wait for your number to be called. When we finish an order, we'll say, now serving guest, blah blah blah, three digit number. And if that is your number, you will come up to the front counter, grab your food, perhaps say thank you, or whatever, and be on your way. Most of the time, we'll be like, thanks, have a nice day, or something back to you. I got off on a tangent. The person running for front counter is expected to get your order assembled and out to you in less than 90 seconds. And there's a timer on every single one of the orders saying how long that you have been waiting from the second you started ordering to the second that you get your food. That is the span of time that it keeps track of. And once that timer passes 90 seconds, it turns red, meaning this person has been waiting too long, you need to get their food out to them now. There's just a number of things that could happen that allow that to happen, including it's a rush and there's a lot of food that needs to get made in a very small amount of time and it's just not gonna happen. It's just gonna come out as it comes out. That's all it is. If you are in a rush and there are seven people in front of you and you are waiting for a giant order, expect a wait that's like 10 or 15 minutes because there's no way that we were going to get that much food, like 20, 30 dollars worth of food from McDonald's, so that's a lot of food, out to you in that small amount of time. There's no way that's gonna happen, but out of all of that, one of my favorite positions is probably running for front counter, 
even though I might get fries thrown at me or whatever and that would be my favorite position because at the end of the day because like I work kind of like mid afternoon beginning of the night shift ish times in my opinion that's like one of the best shifts because you only get like one or two one or two maybe kind of rushes which is dinner and dessert but the rest of the time is spent doing some light cleaning and just chilling out and doing basically nothing because there's nobody there to serve and my least favorite position uh, however is presenting for drive through uh, which is like you look at the screen you're in front of the drink machine there's drink stuff behind you and you have to look in the bag make sure all the right food is there and hand it out doesn't seem like a stressful process right Oh, but you are mistaken, my friend. It is very stressful. You're supposed to only stay in drive through for like three and a half minutes is the, like, is our goal, t is the goal time for you to be sitting in drive through But the thing is... And it's, it's just very stressful. Anyway... That is me off of my soapbox as being an employee at McDonald's. Uh, main points, have a good attitude, be polite to the employees because then they will be polite right back to you and make you have a good experience. And know what you're talking about and what is going on at the time when you order and go through that whole process because that will just make the whole thing so much smoother and just more enjoyable for everybody. So thank you for listening to me on my soapbox doing a little rant today. Uh, see you guys in the next video, and I'll see you later.